Here we are on a Friday morning. Uh, I would say it's a fine Friday morning, but there's a lot of things happening or have just happened uh, a short while ago that make us a little bit downbeat in our mood. Are you well this morning, Pat, yourself? Uh, grand, uh, the, well, the sun's shining here, but it's like that sort of uh, cold morning, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so you... last, last night, as you say, Jude, last night something happened in our capital city. Well, yeah. uh, that we didn't expect to see ever on our streets, did we? Uh, well, well, let me say a couple of things quickly about this first, Pat, and then I'll, I'll, I'll yield the floor to you. Um, I heard, uh, who was it? One of the ministers, uh, you might have been, no, one of, one of the ministers from the Doll talking this morning on the radio. And he said it was an existential threat to our democracy. I frankly think that's bunkum. I really do. Uh, for a start, maybe we're used in the north, I mean, to much fiercer riots than were seen uh, last night in Dublin. Not that they were good, but they were pretty awful. But we've had so many riots. I mean, I remember the flag protests. I remember the drunk green protests. I mean, those were really a threat, I think, to whatever form of democracy we have here. So I do think it has been inflated. There was a young guy shot in somewhere around Dublin uh, who was a promising footballer and who was also, I gather, involved in drug dealing. He was shot yeah. dead. And I, I would have said that that whole thing about the drug dealing and drug gangs and the killing of people, which has been going on and on and on, I would say that's more likely to be a, a threat to an existential threat to the southern democracy rather than what happened last night. Um, anyway, I've got a few other things I'd like to say about it, but you, let's hear your two bits worth. No, I'm, I'm not sure that's a reading of it. Apparently, I was listening to, I heard a, a former Garda uh, assistant chief constable, or probably call him these days, commissioner. He was on this morning. I heard him on, or, or he said he considered it an existential, uh, existential threat to the state on, on, on one, well, on, on a certain level. He says these people have been, he says, working in the background for quite some time. And now, uh, if, he, if he's right, there's, got, uh, there's going to be some questions asked to the Gardaí. He says this has been going on for some time. He says this was not a spontaneous riot. He says, don't anybody think this was spontaneous? He says this was orchestrated. He says all they were waiting for was a trigger point. And the trigger point yesterday was that absolutely awful attack at the school where the wee girl of five is still critical. And uh, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, a woman apparently is quite seriously ill as well. And the other children were stabbed as, as well. So, you know, and apparently it was an immigrant, even though the, apparently the person involved came to Ireland 20, you know, he was born somewhere else, but he came to Ireland 20 years ago. Now, Jude, you, you'd work on the, you'd probably work on the basis. This is somebody who's mentally ill. By the way, the other side of the story of that as well, let's get this on the record. By all accounts, the person who actually intervened and stopped them was an immigrant as well. Okay. So, could could I just, that's just the background. Yeah, go ahead. Pat, yeah. Finish your yeah. But anyway, right. Uh, the Garda Commission or the former, the retired Garda Commissioner said, this this was orchestrated. He says they they came with their masks. They came with their hoodies. He says they gathered at a specific place. He says they uh, they had a plan. He says there were uh, older people. Uh, I think if you've seen the last night, Jude, uh, somebody set fire to a cardboard, and apparently uh, older people said to the, one of the younger guys, "Put that in that police car over there." Uh, so they ran over with a uh, a cardboard box on fire and threw it into a guard car. Yeah, yeah. Your man is saying this is this is political, and he says it's the rise of the far right, and he says it's it's. And he, I presume it's a reflection dude, of what's happening in some parts of London. It's and it, the the rise of Gert Wilders, or we call the guy in Holland. Yeah, uh, a reflection. There's a uh, there's a right wing in Trump in America, Bond, Boris Johnson in and uh, UK. There's a a, a a sort of keep the immigrants out. You know, uh, you know. Let's uh, bring bring back control. As I know, I think what he's saying is this is a growing movement, and it's something we need to be aware of. Well, I think that it's being overhyped, Pat. I really do. Um, first yeah. of all, I would have all the sympathy in the world, and I think it was an appalling thing to stab youngsters uh, coming out of a, out of a school. It's just, I mean, it's outrageous. It just, just shouldn't happen. Yeah. I'm a little disturbed yeah. by the fact that people, including myself, I have to admit. I uh, have talked about this in terms of the guy who attacked was uh, an immigrant. Have I got that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
uh, who was the guy that was was the guy who came to the rescue? Was he an he immigrant? Was an immigrant as well, apparently. But, but he was an early citizen for twenty years. No, 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 not not the not the guy who came to the rescue. The the guy who carried out the attack. By, uh, the, the guy who carried out the attack is apparently an Irish citizen ah, who's okay. been living here for twenty years. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I I I talked in those terms and I took that in, and then I suddenly asked myself a question: Why am I why am I making an identification of this person in terms of being an immigrant? This guy, because that's what the guy the, who I came to. No, can I stop you here because you're going to you know, give an answer, going to... iPad. You're going to give an no, answer. No, I'm, I'm going to get no. I'm going to... The reaction the last night was because he was an immigrant. That's the context. Okay, with uh, well, then I I don't think. Well, okay. Here, 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 here's what I'll say. I don't think we should be repeating that. I I think this notion that one uh, the guy who did it was an immigrant. Uh, that's that that makes a difference. There are bad people in Ireland. He happens to be an immigrant. He might have red hair. He might have blue hair. He might be 10 foot tall. He might be six foot tall. The point is he killed or attempted to kill these children and, the, and their nurse or their, uh, their, their, their the woman who was looking after them. That's the point, not the, that he was a, an immigrant. And likewise, when we said, I thought that was sort of, I, I was disgusted with myself, actually. When I said, there's another immigrant involved, I, but he was an Irish citizen because he'd been here for 20 years. What am I saying? What am I saying? Are I saying yeah. that if, if they're here for 20 years, it's okay, but if they're here for like one year, it's bad? Am I saying yeah. if they became Irish citizens, they're good people, and if they didn't become Irish citizens, oh, they're definitely suspect? I think that feeds into that whole uh, immigrant uh, notion of things. Um, I, so there's quite a few things to say about that as well. One other thing, and that is whenever you have riots, you, certainly, there will be people, and I concede there will be people who are uh, planning to cause as much trouble as possible to maybe even destabilize aspect of civil, civil life in Dublin. But there are far more, I think, a lot of people who join riots because what else would they do? They're 18, they're 20, they're 25, they're at home, they're uh, living in a blighted area, they're of little prospects, and here they see that there's a riot on. Of course they're going to go outside. Of course they're going to watch the aid. Of course they're going to lift a stone or a petrol bomb if they can. And they're going to have the, cr I, I, I hate to say crack, but it, it will sweep them up in the excitement of the thing. I suspect if I was there and if I was in their circumstances, I'd probably be doing the same. Last point, Brenton Payne said, uh, no situation so bad, but the arrival of a policeman will make it worse. And that's what happened last night. Uh, no, uh, well, I see there's there's a sort of a, what would you say, right? There, uh, you're looking for a catalyst, right? I, I see what you're saying about uh, immigrants, but let's, we, we, we'd love to say uh, the color of someone's skin or the fact they're an immigrant doesn't affect it. But we're, we, when you have a sort of an Irish society that's only getting used to immigrants now and so on, there's a problem, right? Here, there's been a couple of high profile, you know, the Ashley Murphy. Uh, her, that yeah. that was an immigrant, and now uh, the stabbing yesterday was an immigrant, and that uh, that's all it needs for a couple of thugs, you know, to sort of say, "Hey, look, point the finger at them." They don't point the finger that the uh, uh, at the, 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 all the doctors and nurses from foreign companies. Uh, I think I I was in Sligo General Hospital yesterday. Half the staff there are definitely not Irish, and the finest people you will ever come across. Mm -hmm. uh, I went into a cafe in Dublin quite well, not quite recently, but all the staff were Brazilian. They're absolutely lovely. You go, uh, you meet. I, I have met uh, my son lives up in Lady and it's, it's a very mixed estate. There's all sorts of people, and there's a wee Syrian family. They're the nicest people you can meet there every day. There or not every day. That's an exaggeration, but every so often they land over at my son's door with food. You know, they're just lovely people. They're so nice and so on. And you see, all, all you need is a couple of high-profile things. To give the bigots and the racists the opportunity to sort of say, but dude, you're, you're, I think you're, you're underplaying the thing. There is a, there is a mood out there, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's been played on by people of mal and uh, mal intent. Dude, there's, there does seem to be this thing now. Uh, no, I, I was reading a wee bit about your man, Gert Wilders, you know, the guy on hmm. his top in, um, Hull. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's doing, he's going the exact same route as Trump and Boris Johnson. Bring back control. 
get out of the EC, uh, 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 Holland, Holland for us. Uh, no way, Trump says America first. Yeah, yeah. Johnson says uh, bring back control. Yeah. You know, get out far. You know, and there seems to be that growing sort of thing. Well, and, well, you, know, you, you say, know, Pat, when you say growing, I'd have to remind you of the fact that both Trump and Boris Johnson are out of office. Yeah, but you, you know something? It's like me, we American friend. He said, I was pre quite prepared to accept the fact that maybe 15 to 20% of, of, of my country, no, in other words, 85% were not bigots. Uh, you know, the, but he, he turned out, he says, uh, what I wasn't prepared for was between 35 and 45% of my country were bigots. Yeah. And like, yeah. like Jude, yeah. He, he, he sort of, okay, Johnson's out of office. But he got the biggest majority in recent yeah. history. Oh, that's true. That's you know, true. And, and, and Trump, uh, near enough, got a well. He got elected once. Well, well I, dodgy. I, I, and, and, and look, look at I look, look at Hungary. Look at Poland. Yeah. Look at uh, Holland. Well, yeah, I don't doubt there are these tendencies. Certainly, uh, actually, I think in terms of Johnson, many people voted for him because he was cracking jokes and he spoke Latin. Uh, but uh, the same thing last night. I wonder what percentage of the people who were doing the in engaged in violence, Pat. Would you say we're part of this existential threat? That is to say that they planned it, they uh, encouraged it, they wanted to create civil disorder, you know, and thought in those terms. Not what percentage would you say? Uh, 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 that uh, way? I, you see, you see, uh, the Garda guy this morning said, you know, and please don't take us an insult. He he was suggesting that people like me and you, we, we're we're downplaying it. He's saying that it's a real threat, and he says we don't think it is, but it is. But see, look, your reaction is you, you're. Uh, right, but he'll have, to, he'll have just, to, a... But he'll have to prove. He will. It's all very well for him to say that, but he'd have to give me some yeah. evidence of it being in it. I yeah. know my uh, well, he, 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 he said, uh, "Well, uh, he said he, he says go on social media, and he says see ah. now the uh, yeah." But, uh, but you're the very man the that would say that social media. You go. You you're, you're busy on social media, and you say there's a bunch yeah, of yeah. nutters out there. Yeah, there's a lot of nutters out there, but I enjoy it. But you see, here's the point. There's a lot of young people to, who don't uh, uh, do anything else, but you know get all their views on social media. Yeah. And if they're getting told, and they look like a lot of people last night, uh, okay, your point as well. If you live in a blighted state, you know, a sink estate, and the right starts, and there's an, uh, and of course it's opportunistic here. Suddenly they've got an opportunity to, uh, what, 12 shops are broken into, uh, uh, Lewis was set on fire, uh, a, a couple of Garda cars were burned out, Three uh, Dublin City buses that cost someone like two hundred thousand each, or were burned. Uh, a fire unit was attacked, you know, uh, and th then there was a bit of looting. So it should, th that has gone across the world. Now, was that orchestrated? And if it was orchestrated, or was it opportunistic? You know, the Garda guy says this morning. He says we better waken up the fact that this is orchestrated. I, okay. And now, Jude, I can't stand over it, but this is what he said. Ah, well, he may say it. that's true. Uh, but again, all of these things we've seen in the north already, and I'd still come back to this point that everybody sort of shrugs their shoulders when a young guy, promising young guy, as a footballer, but a, a drug dealer was shot dead, and you know we think about it for about five minutes and it's gone, and that's been going on and on and on. Second thing is this, they went to, I heard Drew Harris's statement and I thought, you know, you could say it was, it made sense, like, and he was condemning these people uh, and he was saying they were driven by a far right group. I don't know how he knew that, but maybe he, from social media or whatever. But I noticed when Brenton O'Connor, the president of the GRA, the Garda uh, Representatives Organization or whatever, uh, that he was keen to say, we were faced as policemen with two problems. One was enough personnel, and the second day, yeah. enough resources. He was aiming that at Drew Harris. Uh, and to be honest, I would have thought that maybe was the case because they're now talking about, or they were talking last night, about Gardy coming in from all over the country, all over the, sorry, the state, all over the state yeah. to assist. At the you really uh, walked in there yourself. <laughs> yes. The situation in Dublin. Uh, so yeah. I, 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 I think uh, maybe some of the blame might be attached to whoever makes the decisions, and I think it's Harris about what level of preparedness there should be. I don't think they'll have that under preparedness again, and I think people are uh, too slow to say there should have been preparedness for this kind of thing. This is not the first time that petrol bombs have been thrown in uh, O'Connell Street. I remember the time oh. that the Orange Order went down. 
and uh, we're going to prance through Dublin. And by God, the guys come out of petrol bombs and stones and everything. And they had the place uh, in chaos in no time. I don't think yeah. I was prepared. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent. There would have been some people who would have made it prepared. But I don't believe, again, I would say well over 50% of the people were not prepared to go out. They had the opportunity and out they went. Yeah. I, no, I'm not disputing but you, like, let's get this clear. Uh, uh, you can organize things on social media. The yeah. fact that uh, apparently they all gathered at, a, at a, a particular place, I think it was up at the top of Barnell Square somewhere, and that they were, and then they deliberately went through a crime scene, even though, and so on. Mm -hmm. That's what the Garda guy, the former Garda guy was saying. Atlee, he, that's his name, he was on this morning. He was saying, this was orchestrated. He says, let there be no doubt about that. And he says, uh, you know, and he says, we're, and it's going to happen again. And he says, the rise of the far right is something we should be taking seriously. He says, it's been under the radar for too long. Well, I, I, I'm not for a moment saying that there aren't bigots in Ireland. I'm not for a moment saying that there aren't racists in Ireland. I'm not saying for a moment that there weren't racists organising stuff. Uh, in, in the sense that they were able, be able to use social media to make sure there was a sort of a, a flash mob, as they now call them. Yeah. But I bet there also were young guys who were saying, oh, geez, I must contact my mate. And they'd send a message to his mate. Listen, I'll see you in such a place and bring your man yeah, with yeah. you too. And we'll, there'll be plenty of us and we'll, we'll have a go with the cops. Uh, I suspect there was that level. And we don't want to do that. It's better. We feel better if we say, oh, it was an organized thing. Because then we can yeah. sort of deal with it. The truth is, I would be amazed if a... Uh, if any noticeable percentage of young fellas in that area of Dublin uh, are in favour or favor favourably disposed towards the Gardaí, I would say most of them yeah. can't, can't stand them. And they'd throw a stone yeah. at them if they got a chance. And that's the same yeah. in many places which are socially deprived. There is an instinctive dislike of the Gardaí. And when the Gardaí come out with uh, shields and batons and so on, that only incites them. So, you know, yeah. I just think, I'm not saying for a moment I haven't got sympathy with people that uh, were attacked. I think it's appalling. I'm not saying for a moment that we're not having a problem with um, immigrants or that there aren't racists in our society or your society, <laughs> the Southern society. But I'm saying don't let's over-exaggerate it. And I think we're exaggerating it now. Yeah. Well, by the way, you, no, go, go, uh, you need to go back. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Annette uh, Cunningham, she's the Garda representative person. She's the chairperson of the, the association. She said, uh, on, I heard her uh, when I was on my way to Dundee Bonclan earlier this morning. Yeah. Uh, she said that the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, should, must stop saying that there's enough Garda in, in, in Dublin. She says she knows that that's not the case. We know it's not the case. It's not true. She says every time there's a problem in Dublin, she says they have to bu bus Gardy in from all arts and parts. And mm. she says, and she's it's a situation. She says there, Dublin is not capable. Uh, there, there are not sufficient uh, workforce in, in Dublin to deal with Dublin. She says they need help ev on each and every occasion. And she's uh, the minister. She says, has to stop saying. She says because that is not true. She was very strong on it actually. She was basically saying the minister, uh, the minister is lying every time she says that. Well, you see, that, 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 that's one of the things that I would say, that people who are leading the Gardaí, so to speak, are not accepted by the vast majority. We saw that. Like, I guy Brenda Cotter was the president of the organisation, 99% of whom rejected the plans for the uh, Gardaí by Drew Harris. They make the point again mm. and again. There's young fellows who have joined the Guardian and who are leading it because they, the kind yeah. of conditions they're working in and the kind of money they're getting isn't worthwhile. So, I mean, they, I think we should keep their eye on two things. One, certainly this racist problem in Ireland and what size it is and what steps you need to take. It doesn't necessarily mean it's vast, but you still need to deal with it. And the second thing you need to do is look at your guardie and see, have we enough guardie? Are we giving them enough uh, pay? Are they working in conditions that attract people to join the profession? Uh, those two things are are separate. There's a danger, I think, maybe we'll conflate them too much. This incident yeah. has heightened awareness of the state of the mm -hmm. guardie. And I really hope that people listen to what O'Connor said, that the guardie haven't been given the resources that they should have, and there isn't the attraction for personnel to join. 
did, did you see the nine o'clock news last night? Uh, if you didn't, uh, there was yeah, a, I did. Uh, I saw it, yeah. A, uh, yeah. Do you, do you see the guy who was uh he was broadcasting from near the scene, and suddenly there were uh, he was interrupted by people shouting "Seal the border, seal the border." He's having the scene yeah. right right away. The three or four guard he came up, but did the, the, uh, the, I would love to know uh, uh, as you as you rightly point out how many people were there for political reasons and mm -hmm. how many were there for opportunistic reasons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your guy this morning, well, I, well, I don't know who it was actually said this morning, it's something that uh, the Yardish, uh, there should be so, a task force to set up to look at this, uh, to have a look at all aspects of it. Is it a major issue? What, how do we deal with it? What about the Yardie? What about the politics? But I, I presume, Jude, uh, as well, as, as you've rightly pointed out again, that if you, there's a combination of things if you're living in a sink estate, if you if you're living in poverty and deep uh, deprivation, if you if you have no prospects, uh, have you got a chance to have a go a bash at the establishment at and they show up at anger? You're going to take it, whether that's political or whether that's just uh, you know what, um, no sort of reckless behaviour. I don't know. Mm. I I wonder does anybody has anybody put forward a motive for the attack? This is a huh? basically uh, no, no, the. Well, the guy that did the attacking was doing it on racist grounds, was it? Is that what you're saying? What, what, the, what, what are you referring to? The, I'm, the saying, attack on the I'm saying, what was the motivation the guy had who stabbed the children and the woman? Oh, oh God, they don't know. They, they, well, that, he's, I, I think, I, I presume, I would say more than likely he, he, he was mentally ill. He had that's be. right, that's exactly but right. I, that's only speculation. Yeah, Why yeah. would you attack? Yeah, yeah. Because, so, because uh, it's an appalling thing, but it is a deranged man. Uh, I would yeah. have thought anyway, except we're given evidence to the contrary. And as such, you know, it's a question of mental health rather than a question of public order. Then you have the, the riots, and that I think is a separate thing. Um, I, I, I just think when you put it alongside what happened inside the last fortnight, that young guy was shot dead. Is there something in us that says, well, they, they killed one of their own. You know, they shot one of their own. And these gangs, we'll have to crack these gangs. They've been saying that for 20 years. Yeah, I, mean, I would say, yeah, say uh, organised uh, gangs like that. Uh, 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 but, you know, Dublin has a major uh, drug problem and there's drug gangs. Now, I think that was the first murder this year so far. And the Gardaí, believe it or not, should, uh, quite a lot of the criminals have been put away. You know mm. that... Uh, um, uh, can I, um, uh, what do you call the other guy? Feud, uh, uh, the monk, the Hutch, aye, can aye. Hutch feud. Just, like the Gardy, uh, a hell of a lot of guys were, were arrested and a hell of a lot of guys are in jail. You know, and, uh, uh, and, and the Gardy have taken it very seriously. And was, uh, this, this is the first murder, and apparently it's a local dispute. And this yeah. guy fell out with certain people on yes. his own patch, and he, yeah. he was going to set up, allegedly going uh -huh. to set up on his own. Yeah, well, I, I think that you're probably right, Pat, but I, I would also say that in the, this has been going on for 20 years or more where they're going to crush these gangs, and they haven't. Uh, and secondly, I, I worry a little bit uh, that we sort of will pass over the death of a young man that was deliberately murdered, and we turn and we show terrible uh, feelings of uh, tragedy and fear and so on with the stabbing of children. Not that it wasn't it wasn't a horrible thing, but the fact is we passed over a death. We're all upset about a uh, 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 stabbing incident. John, can go, go say me, sir? There was a pharmacist on this morning. She's uh, uh, I think she was described as every student on knees. I'm not quite sure, mm. but she said anyway. She says she wears a hijab. No, she was very very articulate. She says. Uh, she says, several people have told me for my own good, maybe I should take off my hijab. But she says, I don't want to do it. She says, like, she's like, by the way, she's the other thing, I can't change the color of my skin. So even taking off the hijab is not going to solve the problem. But she said, apparently, yesterday, earlier in the day, two women in Dublin city center had the hijabs pulled off them by uh, thugs. Now, Jude, that's, that's what's going on, you know. So there is an issue. Mm. Well, if I point part in that, uh, for some time now, they've been telling us, and I think they're right, because the last time I was in O'Connell Street, uh, there was a guy, a woman, lying at the side of the street, and she clearly was in a bad way mentally and physically. She was clearly a drug addict. And uh, people were saying, you know, you cannot, no, no woman, certainly, 
or and probably nobody should walk down the uh, O'Connell Street on their own. So O'Connell yeah. Street has been a sort of a sewer for a long time, and that's respect. Maybe yeah. not a sewer, but uh, not the kind of main street you'd want for the state you live in uh, yeah. in the capital city. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. okay, have we done enough? Of it? We haven't done enough in it. It's, uh, it's very interesting, very interesting, and um, reactions have been very interesting. I would, there's one thing I I I I I want to just link up past. I talked about Drew Harris there, who is the uh, Garda Commissioner. Now, when he was in the North, he was in the RUC Special Branch, and he worked very closely with MI5. Did you yeah. see recently where Sean Brown, the guy who was yeah, a the, I closed, body, yeah. closing up the club and was uh, abducted by a bunch of uh, loyalist paramilitaries, uh, beaten up, they say now, but they, uh, at the time they said he struggled to get away, took him in the boot of a car, took him and murdered him. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, would the question I'd put is this. If Drew Harris was working closely with MI5, if there was collusion between loyalists and um, state forces, which many people are saying because they're, they will not release some aspects of what happened, uh, yeah. making Drew Harris be somebody to turn to, if he could spare us a thought from yesterday's incident, maybe just uh, reflect a bit on, on um, what happened about 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Yeah. I thought it was an unbelievable statement to make. The fact that the uh, the PSNI wouldn't hand over information on the basis that it's uh, uh, that the, 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 it's some sort of security compromise on it, dude, that 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 speaks volumes to me. It really does. It goes to show once again. By the way, it's not the first time. Just how deep loyalists were working with the state, and uh, what's going on. Uh, and uh, I don't, dude, I, I don't know. Like, see this legacy issue as well. Like that is not in the least about uh, you know concern for the victims. It's to protect the state, to protect the state actors and what they were up to, you know. And uh, what's happening in the north? I, I keep coming back to this because it really does annoy me, and it did annoy me. There's this, there's this sort of a uh, narrative that's been put out by Dublin and London that the uh, the the only enemy during the whole thing was the IRA, and everybody else were the good guys. And that is a biggest load of crap. But the state was up to its eyeballs with loyalism. You know, it was at uh, the, there was all sorts of stuff going on in the background. You, you, you know, there was murders carried out on the name of the state. There was people, IRA people, taken out uh, by loyalists at the behest of the state. There were, you know, and, and all the way up to Downing Street. And don't, anybody that says that uh, uh, um, Thatcher and people like that didn't know what was going on, rubbish. You know, so dude, there there are major questions, and of course the whole the whole thing is. Uh, the state sort of uh, plays itself as a, as the good guy all the time. So mm -hmm. there's uh, you, the state was a nasty uh, uh, actor in the whole drama, and uh, and it's uh, it took that th it's a sad thing that it's taken fifty years, and most of the people now are dead. Yeah, Th think part of we're feeling indignant and sort of outraged about that case. Think what that must be like for that family, yeah. hanging on and hanging on and knowing. That the state is refusing to tell you what happened. I saw it was such a horrible. I I don't know what stands out in my head. It was just a, a guy, a GAA guy, locking up the the, the uh, clubhouse, and these bastards yeah. came along. I mean, it's just so outrageous, terrible, terrible, yeah. terrible. Anyway, okay. So we, we talk about it. <laughs> we talk about a threat to the state. I would say this: yeah. the, the state is a threat. To the state is a threat to the, uh, to the people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So you think Wilders, Pat, this guy Wilders in in De um, Holland is another yeah. Boris or another Trump, and he wants immigrants out. And he's anti-Muslim and he wants rid of the EU as well. You think is he a a real? Is he an existential threat to the EU or to uh, Holland? Yeah, well, you see, the, the thing is, he got something like 36% of the vote, so that means, what, 60-something, 4%, uh, or 63% uh, didn't vote for him, but he's the largest party. The only thing is, uh, he, I can't remember, he needs a hell of a lot of uh, coalition yeah, partners, yeah, yeah. you know, in Holland, so I, I, it's not maybe as, as bad as it, but, but it goes to show... I've all, you know, uh, if, if there's 10 runners and you get the most, you're, you're, you're the top dog. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, so, but, and he probably will have to, uh, but he's anti uh, immigrant, he's anti Muslim. Uh, now, Holland has had, Holland used to be so, so liberal that, that uh, remember, there's a couple of years back, uh, uh, some, I think he was a filmmaker, 
he made some film about um uh, what do you call him Mahmoud, and he was he was he was out in his bike one morning, and, and the guy almost beheaded him, a Muslim guy for insulting Allah, and and that that shocked uh, Dutch public opinion big time, you mm. know. Uh, so everything's changed. Uh, Sweden was also a very sort of liberal society, and they brought, got a lot of immigrants. And apparently, Sweden is lurching to the right now, which a very left leaning, very liberal, very you no, know, let everything go and so on. So, Jude, I'm sort of wondering, is there a trend right across the globe? You no, know, yeah. because there's so much immigration now that the old settled societies, you know, mm -hmm. and are suddenly faced with uh, people with different culture, different yeah. religion, different color skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're absolutely right, Pat. Uh, it is a bit unnerving when you put it in those terms, and there is that trend throughout the world. Uh, and there is, but you see, the EU leaves itself open to criticism. It makes decisions, all right, and that's the way it is. They make decisions for the majority, but it's usually actually decisions that France and Germany are leading. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, People in countries which are not doing very well or who are living in circumstances where they feel left behind, like Trump, uh, they, they say, give me a savior, produce a savior. Tell me somebody who will allow all my rage and anger and give me a focal point for immigrants. That's the problem. And, you know, they've been saying that for a long time. I'll just very quickly finish in this. Years and years and years ago, I think I told you, I was in my office and a woman, who a really nice woman, local woman, uh, come in and empty the, the uh, trash can or the waste basket. And um, she started talking about her son had a wee um, uh, plumbing company, I think. And she, I said, oh, that's great. And she said, oh, no, it's not doing so well now. There's there's, uh, there's, there's too many Polish around and they're under cutting them. Too many of them shouldn't be allowed. So, well, this is the nicest woman in the world. But for yeah. her, she was able to identify the enemy to her son, an effort to her, an effort to her society. Okay, uh, let's let's move on, Pat, very briefly to uh, the DUP and a split on the cards. You think there's a split yeah. on the cards because of something? No, Jim, but it's a it's a real possibility. I was uh, no, I'm not. Uh, you think you uh, somebody would be the ins more on the inside than I am? But I'm looking at it from the outside. There, a split definitely seems on the uh, could be on the cards. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Robinson. I, 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 the DUP said he uh, it was a solo run that they, they didn't know he was going to write what he did and so on. Well, uh, for those who didn't know what Peter Robinson basically said earlier this week, the DUP shouldn't push it much further, that they have pushed the British government and they've tried the patience of the people and uh, Westminster to the nth degree and it's starting to sort of uh, rebound on them that they should, uh, they're not going to get everything they want, but this is a pretty good deal. And he was suggesting they should have a look at it the DUP should really uh, sort of say, right, we've we've got as much as we're going to get. And I think what he was saying is, uh, and anything else then that you want, you should set up Stormont and then fight from within Stormont to get everything sorted out. Uh, and of course, he's going to say, um, they can also, there will also be some cash, much needed cash uh, coming Northern Ireland's way after the thing is set up again. So th that's it. But Sammy Wilson uh, is saying, he doesn't agree that uh, uh, and Jim Allister is no Jim's outside the tent. He's in the TV, but, but he's saying there's no way any unionists could possibly accept a sea border because it, it means they're sort of disenfranchised. I don't understand how that works, by the way. But anyway, all this sort of stuff. And uh, apparently, uh, Ian Paisley is of this of similar view. And then apparently they're down to uh, Edwin Putz, um, Gregory Campbell, and Carla Lockhart are sort of agnostic as we speak. They're, they're neither on one side nor the mm, other. Mm, mm, but mm. If, uh, if Sir Jeff goes along and says, right, we're going back in, and the other guy says, no, we're not, what happens then? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, Pat, I have such a con conspiratorial mind that I wouldn't be surprised if Peter Robinson consulted with Sir Jeff, as you call him, and yeah. they used Robinson to get people used to the idea that maybe it'd be okay for Jeffrey and company to go back in. That's, I don't that's think, my view as well. Yeah. I don't think that the, they'll ever convert Sally or, or uh, Lord Dodds, but uh, I think there's, there's, they're, they're greasing the path so that when they go back in, they won't look too bad. That's my guess, Pat. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, it'll still represent a split within uh, the DUP. 
And also, there's there a, there a couple of kidding factors, and that is they've got to convert the DUP supporters because the DUP supporters right. are supportive of this staying away from storm until they get all their seven tests or whatever uh, validated. Yeah. Uh, so it maybe will run deeper than we think, uh, or am I being too... I mean, here's the point. You know, everybody's saying about Jim Allister, but Jim Allister's had a, a good run at it, and he's not he's never got more than himself really elected. So, ah, that's true, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. That, yeah, you know, and uh so if you decide you leave the DUP, you know, you know, uh, is there a big future for you outside the DUP? Like uh, it looks like the DUP um uh, is the only show in town. And uh, people like Doug Beatty are, say, are sort, of, sort of saying, uh he said Peter Robinson uh, uh, finally said what he's been saying a long time. That what the DEP is doing now is starting to become very counterproductive. That if the direct rule comes along, it's going to be a do you want direct rule uh, uh, with a big Dublin? Uh, I don't know which do you prefer, De devolution, a bad devolution, or bad direct rule? Which is your choice? Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you what is at the heart of all this. You you know, you said you didn't understand why, but you do, Pat. You understand perfectly well. Uh, this notion that uh, the DUP are fearful, or like Sammy Wilson is fearful, that if they bring in, and Jim Allister is fearful, if they bring in economic Irish unity, which effectively, well, that's what it will be. That's exactly uh, it, yeah. Then that might be laying the grounds for a political union. I, let's put it like this. If you had economic unity, it wouldn't do political unity any harm. You know, no. that's exactly what happened yeah. in the EU. So maybe, maybe, maybe they're right. But I'll tell you this, it's not going to change. The Windsor framework no. is going to stay in place. And the sooner they get back, the better, because those supporters who are supporting them are going to get a pain in their bum, waiting for yeah. hospital appointments, waiting for schools that were, aren't leaking or falling apart, uh, people trying to strive to find a way to keep on living with rotten wages. Anyway, yeah. I think we've been really downbeat, Pat, today. Is there is yeah. there an inspirational thing? Uh, we could say. Jen, I'm launching my book. I'm, I'm launching my book. I'm oh, launching yes. my book. Oh, and, uh, we'll have to have yeah, that. Next, next Thursday night in the Guildhall. And there's a book signing in Letter Kenny the following Friday, or the the, the, the Saturday. So Aye. Thursday night in the Guildhall, I'm launching my book. Th uh, Thursday, the 30th of no November. But fear not, this is a teaser. Because next Monday, we're going to spend at least half, if not all, of the program talking about your book and forcing you to defend it. <laughs> all those bad things you said in it. Well, all those bad things you said. <laughs> Richard. Okay, Pat. All the best. See you later. Yeah. See you later.